third world and less adapted countries will catch up with the media regulation that's in place in more westernised countries? I think we need to go back and, and look initially at why there, there has always been a perceived need to control the media. Since newspapers ex existed, since, since the invention of the printing press, and since the ability for people to communicate more rapidly and more effectively with the general population, and since greater literacy has occurred, governments have always tried to control the stories that are told about them. In democracy, we depend upon a news media to hold the powerful to account. Um, what's happened in recent years is we've had a change, another sea change, in the level and speed and quantity of information that is available. With the internet and with uh, social media, particularly Twitter, we've now seen a phenomenon where uh, it is possible for those in power to circumvent the media and, and speak directly to a particular part of the population. Uh, we've seen that with Donald Trump and the way he has governed through Twitter. Um, we've also seen, in this country, newspapers misbehaving to the point where um, they have, in order to, to, to get more and more readers, they have told more and more salacious stories to the point where uh, we've had to have an inquiry about what it was the journalists were doing to get those stories. Um, and the Millie Dowd case is a, is a perfect example. So we've then had a Leveson inquiry um, with uh, looking at how the media should be regulated. The question has then re-arisen that do we need to have a regulated media? Um, in the United States, the freedom of the press is enshrined within the First Amendment of the United States Constitution of freedom of speech. So there is no mediation, or rather there is no um, regulation of the media in the United States, net technically. In this country, we have libel and slander laws, and the libel and slander laws have in the past been used to control, or rather to challenge what newspapers say, and certain newspapers are regularly being challenged for what they say. Private Eye, run by uh, Ian Hislop, um, is regularly taken to court for slander. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. Taken to court for libel. Slander is where you speak um, badly about someone. Libel is where you have written something about someone. And the laws are slightly different. Um, so those are ways in which the, the, the press have been uh, muzzled in, in some respects. There's also something known as a D-notice. And D-notices are used in this country to stop the press from reporting on particular things. When it comes to a free press in Britain, journalists have long been confused about a censorship system that revolves around something called the D-notice. While politicians scoff at the D-notice system, which technically means the government can ban any media from covering a story, demonstrators at Occupy have not been so sanguine. Caroline Lucas MP has just spoken about hash Occupy democracy and told us that journalists... A really good example of a D-notice uh, are any reports that journalists might have about what our armed forces are doing um, if they're operating in an environment where it's, it's not wise to let the enemy know what we're doing. Thank you. Do you think the internet has had a big impact on the evolution of media regulation? Definitely the internet has had a massive impact on uh, media regulation. Um, perhaps the greatest impact ever that, media, that the media has had or, or been subjected to. Uh, it's had a tremendous impact on it. Um, and, and always, what, you've, what you'd have seen, as I mentioned earlier, the, this idea of the, of the printing press making a difference. The minute that um, more people can start reading uh, and, and reading about and writing about what's happening, uh, the, the more you communicate with the, with the broader general population, the more uh, you, you can question what's happening. So the, the printing press is, is a start. That's one of the, the sort of sea changes. Uh, the invention of the typewriter, the invention of typesetting and automated typesetting and the speeding up of, of printing presses and then the, the, the digital and electronic revolution of the internet and that we now have a 24-hour news cycle. Everything is up to date and we've got on top of that social media. 
all of those things have compounded to make the job of the newspapers in, in some ways easier and in some ways far more difficult. It's made the job easier in terms of gathering the news. So, for example, when 9-11 happened, normally an event like that, uh, we'd have been told about it and we might have seen the aftermath on cameras. I actually watched the second plane fly into the, into the, uh, the tower because there were people who had mobile phones and, and cameras um, who were on the spot. Not journalists, ordinary citizens. Every one of us carries a, a mobile phone now that could do video. So news, the news cycle has become so instantaneous. The trouble is that it's not being done by journalists. It's being done by untrained uh, or uh, non-specialised uh, filmmakers. We get instant and, inf and, and, and useful information, but it's not always being filtered or mediated. Um, and sometimes it's the job of editors, uh, both in uh, the newspapers and in uh, newsrooms, to, to, to mediate that. The job of an, of an editor is to check and fact check what it is that they are uh, reporting and how they're reporting it, and to try and maintain what we call objectivity. Thank you. I think third world and less adapted countries will catch up with the media regulation put in place in more westernised countries. The way you've asked that question implies that media regulation is actually a positive thing. Um, I'd like to sort of turn that question slightly on its head and say that ultimately what media regulation leads to is censorship. Now, censorship, as I've mentioned with D-notices, censorship might sometimes be necessary. Uh, but most of the time, the idea of censorship is that the government is then controlling what the media is telling us. And there are countries around the world, Turkey is a good example, North Korea is another good example, and Saudi Arabia is a very pertinent example of how um, newspapers are censored by the, by the government and are only allowed to report certain things. Even to the point, and we've just recently had um, a Mr. Khashoggi who worked for the uh, American press, who was killed in the Turkish embassy by a Saudi hit team in order to shut him up because he was critical of the Saudi regime. Now that is, that's not media regulation, that is a, an attempt at censorship. And totalitarian regimes try very hard to control what the press say or do. Perhaps the most extreme example of that is when Hitler came to power in, 1930, in 1937 in uh, Germany, he took immediate control of all forms of media representation, or rather media... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to re rephrase that. When Hitler came to power, uh, his party took control of the media in Germany the radio stations, the film industry, and newspapers, and education, in fact. Uh, and what happened was a whole generation of Germans were fed information by the government that led to uh, all sorts of horrific things happening, none the least of which was the Holocaust. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome.